Hello, hello. All right, welcome back to 79. It's been a short minute. Um, I haven't done a video for, well, since, since the pandemic started, um, partly because, uh, as you can tell, I've moved. I'm in a different, my, my garage is completely different. We've moved house. Uh, some big life changes that kind of gets in the way of uh, buying parts and working on cars and all those sorts of things. And um, yeah, I thought I would um, just sort of like catch up with you guys about what I've been up to with the car, uh, which actually isn't very much, to be honest. Um, I'm just trying to think what I may have done since um, since we last since I last did a video. I, it, really, not too much sort of basic maintenance. Haven't driven it as much as I would have liked. Um, it, moving house, all that kind of stuff has been a bit crazy. This garage um, had to be completely um, redone. Uh, we we bought a house with an old garage in the back, and it just uh, it was it was standing, but that was about it. So we I redid it, and um, I'll give you a tour of that sometime. Um, but today. The reason that I wanted to start filming again was because I'm doing something that um, I'm doing a valve adjustment. My car needs a valve adjustment, and um, I'll explain why in a second. Um, but basically, this is the second time I would have done my own valve adjustment. The first time uh, was in the old space, and um, I had the CIS out and all these sorts of things to fix the oil leaks in the little triangle of death area and clean up some of the bits and pieces, and that all went really well. Um, and at the same time, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to do a valve adjustment. I didn't know if it needed doing. But um, I also got a quote from a couple of local garages, and um, if for anyone who watches my videos, you know that I'm not like a uh, sort of like one of the t traditional wealthy wealthy Porsche guys. Um, it's very much um, you know a passion purchase. Every single thing I do on the car has got to be very seriously considered. Uh, so when I called some of the garages um, and mechanics for a valve adjustment, uh, to be very honest with you, it was not something I could afford to do. Um, so I had to go myself and um, I ran into some problems. Uh, I did it two years ago and since then, um, and there are going to be some people hanging their heads when I say this, but I've been hearing, uh, I've been getting valve lash, uh, particularly on my passenger side uh, on the top valve covers. And I've used the mechanics uh, stethoscope uh, to figure out that it's, um, it's in, located in that area. So um, it's just bugging me. I, I did take it to a mechanic and uh, in, in local to where I am in Toronto and, and uh, uh, they said not to worry about it, just, you know, drive it and all those sorts of things. I don't quite know how much I trust that, but um, this is what I was told. So I've been enjoying driving, but um, hey, it's seasonal time for an oil change, um, which I've also been putting off because I wanted to do the valve adjustment at the same time. So why am I doing it for the second time? Well, I'm getting this valve lash um, sound, so it's just like a, a click, 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 click that goes with the, rev, with the revs of the engine. You can hear it, it's bugging me. I want things to be perfect. I messed it up clearly, so let's do it again and do it the right way. Now, previously I used the feeler gauge. Um, for anyone who's not done a valve adjustment before, this video I think is gonna help you out. For anybody who's familiar with doing a valve adjustment, oh, don't even bother watching, honestly, because, uh, and that will watch and tell me everything that I'm doing wrong and leave it in the comments below, which would be epic, because I'm always, I, I'm so keen to learn from everyone. Um, but basically, this is the traditional way of doing it. You have a little feeler gauge here, um, and uh, there's a very, very small, uh, thin piece of metal, 0 0.01 of an inch thick. And this, you take the valve covers off, you slide it uh, into place, uh, you tighten down the adjustment screw, you get it so it feels correct, you use a little bit of oil, you've got to feel right, you tighten the screw, take out the, the feeler gauge, tighten everything down, slide it back in, check it, and if it feels correct, you're probably good to go. But here's the issue. I've only done it once before, so I don't know if it's meant to feel correct. Um, and clearly, uh, for somebody who's a newbie like me, trying to go by feel isn't a way that worked very well for me, given the fact that I'm getting all this valve lash. Um, so uh, I wanted, I, I've been sort of keeping my eyes on the forums and, and reading a whole bunch of stuff about different bits and pieces. Um, and there's a couple of different tools out there uh, that I wanted to go through, and one I'm really, really, really excited to try because I think, I think it's foolproof, um, and you know what they say, it's time to prove I'm a fool. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'm going to put the valve, uh, the feeler gauge to one side, and we're going to focus on these other two. So, the first thing um, was the Stomsky tool, which is, uh, which is this. I'm going to leave links to all of these guys down below. So, um, this is a device that screws down uh, onto the engine block and then you have a very precise uh, travel gauge 
here and this will measure precisely the rise and fall of the rocker arm so that you know whether or not you're getting that valve adjustment correct or not. Um, really, really, it seems like a really, really good system. I have yet to use it, but I've purchased it for a specific purpose. Now, because I'm not mechanically uh, savvy, particularly, um, this looks brilliant. And I was super, super, super excited about this because it's such a precise thing. So instead of going by feel, now I'm going by measurement. I'm going by something that I can see and I can measure. I love this. However, I'm, I then found a company called uh, Snapgap. And Snapgap have produced this kit. Um, and it comes in a nice fancy case. And I've got to give a shout out. I'm part of an air cooled group here in Toronto um, that has been growing massively in size. It's awesome to see like new members, experienced owners, and all this kind of stuff. So somebody put me onto this. Um, and I checked it out, and it's very, very cool how it's meant to work. So, I worked out that for one hour of labor, I can buy this kit. For another hour of labor, I can buy the Stomsky tools so that I can then measure my results of having used the Snap Gap kit because I am completely OCD. And one of the big problems that I have in working on this car that I've come to realize is I find it very difficult to relax actually once I've once I've made adjustments, and it's because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing everything for the first time. So I'm doing this regular, these sort of regular bits of maintenance, or I'm pulling out the CIS and I'm cleaning things up and you know fixing oil leaks and all this kind of stuff. And I put everything back together, and then I drive around completely paranoid that I've done it all wrong. So I'm trying to find ways around this so that I can manage my OCD. Um, so I'm, let's, let's take a closer look at the Snapgat kit, and we can see exactly what's going on here. But on opening it up, we have inside some pretty decent uh, instructions. Um, now, uh, they have an amazing video, which I am going to include in my video here today. Uh, uh, they've graciously said that I can uh, show their method of how this works. They actually do the installation uh, with the engine out of the car. I'm gonna be doing it inside the car. So this is something that um, I think that they show it far better than I will be able to. So we'll, we'll link to that as well. So this is the kit. Um, these are the collars. And these go in place of the locking of the factory locking nut. Um, and these are done very smartly. These will go over the locking nut. They then have a very small um, adjustment screw. Oh, this isn't open. I won't open these up yet because I'm probably going to be clumsy and spill them everywhere. But uh, sorry, this is the locking screw, um, which is a little hex screw that then locks down onto this collar. So once this collar's in place, you then lock it further with this, and it's just all completely tight onto the adjustment screw, which is uh, really, really secure. Um, you have a torque key um, here as well, and these are the uh, shims. So we'll open one of these up and then I can show you in closer detail exactly what this looks like. So here is a shim, um, and this is the little piece of metal that will slide in and sit, sit right underneath the collar. And this is what you tighten your adjustment screw down onto. Um, and you can see it's laser engraved with a 0.01, I hope you can see that 0.01 of a millimeter. Um, so this is, you know, a really, really precise way of doing it. Now, there's enough shims in here, it seems, to do three or four adjustments, I'm guessing. Um, so when you get the kit, uh, you've got all of these pieces. These, the, the, the collars, they are all um, reused every single time you do an adjustment, which is once every 5,000 miles uh, on your older 911s. Um, and uh, so you get enough shims in the kit to do this a few, few different times, which is great. And you can also uh, keep buying just replacement shims and replacement locking screws. Um, I believe they sell at the collars as replacements as well, but hopefully you wouldn't need any of those um, unless you lose some in doing, doing an adjustment. So uh, this is the kit. Um, we're gonna crack right on um, and uh, see how well this works. All right, so for the very first part of the valve adjustment, we need to remove uh, all of the spark plug wires. Uh, we need to remove the valve cover covers. Uh, you have two valve covers on the top, two valve covers on the bottom, both of the, on, uh, two on each side, so four total. Those all need to come off, um, and the distributing cap needs to come off. Now, uh, very important, make sure that you label 
all of your uh, spark plug wires as they come out of the car so that you know exactly which way they're going back in and everything's linked up and you just don't have to figure all that stuff out later. Uh, I have the Cluit um, spark plug wires and they each have a little number on the distributor um, top of the, the connection that goes into the distributor. Uh, so that makes my life a little bit easier. And of course, not forgetting, the very first thing you need to do, which I did yesterday, is to get all of the oil out of the car. Um, funny enough, uh, there's some discussion in our group about whether or not you need to remove the oil from the car. You don't need to remove the oil from the car. Um, uh, there's there's just gallons of oil in the bottom of the, uh, the sump area of the engine and lower valve covers particularly. If you take those off without emptying the oil, you are in for a big mess. Uh, you may not need to drain the oil from the tank. Uh, so if you've got fresh oil in there, you know, maybe you're sure you can get away with leaving that in place. I would just say, if you're doing it for the first time like me, get all of the oil out, remove all of the complications, all of the things that could go wrong. Don't listen to anybody's advice about doing it in an alternate way. Uh, we're going to get into firing order soon. I've heard rumors about being able to do it in a different firing order, turning your, cranking your engine backwards or anti-clockwise, all these sorts of things that the factory manuals say don't do, that all the old timers say don't do. So just don't do it. Like, that's just my two cents. I just, I'm going by the book. Um, there might be other ways, but I'm going to go by the book. So uh, let's get in. I'm going to uh, start unplugging everything um, and just sort of run through a quick of a, a bit of a step by step. I I'm not going to go through um, draining the oil. You should know how to do that. If you don't, I'm going to include a link below about how to drain the oil. Um, and if you're draining the oil for the first time, um, I would stick with just that as a project and maybe save this one for, for next time. All right, this is awesome. So we've got a nice amount of light in the engine uh, so that I can actually show you what's going on here. Um, and if anyone's interested, this uh, this car bra or whatever you want to call it, this rear cover for the uh, engine bay uh, is epic. I did start doing some work on it when I first got the car. I managed to achieve a tiny little chip here, so I immediately brought one of these. If you're doing any work on the back of the car, get one of these. It's, it's not too expensive and it's going to save you some a world of pain when it comes to, you know, sort of damaging your paint or clanging at all against it or any of that stuff. Anyway, uh, so the very first thing that we want to do is we want to pull all of the, uh, the spark plug wires and I'm just going to throw my light on here actually and maybe get you to see. Yeah, okay, so here we go. So this is the upper valve cover on the passenger side. So we're literally pulling these out one by one. Uh, these come out nice and easy. So we're just going to pull these out. Oh, there we go. And get these out of the way. And then we're going to be doing the same over here. So uh, this space is a little bit darker, but uh, we are going to be pulling that just here, here, and right in there. Okay, so we have our spark plugs out of the way. I'm not taking the dizzy cap off yet, because um, I think I want to see if I can... What I want to do is I want to get all the valve covers off first. Uh, now I'm going to swing back around to this side. So you'll see on the top here that we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, these are 12 mil little nuts. These need to come off um, and they should, I'm trying to do this one handed. They should just come off um, pretty easily. Okay, so this should come off nice and easy. Now we're going to unscrew all of these. There are eleven on the rear, on the sorry, on the bottom covers that we will uh, go through later. And then there's a, sort of a sequence that you want to go through when you put these back on. Um, so I'm just going to crack on and get all of this off, and then I'll meet you um, for the next section. Okay, valve cover number one. So the valve cover will be off, and you will also have. So be careful to take this off. This is the gasket. So each of each valve cover also has a gasket. Now the gasket's going to get replaced as well. Uh, some of you might find that you have the orange gaskets on there. Um, I've never used them. These are reusable apparently. Um, I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about them. And when I hear mixed reviews about things, I often think, why bother? Because if you're a... Uh, doing something that's working on an engine as precise as this that you love, it's really not too expensive to replace these guys every single time you use them. 
Um, mine came off really easy because I've done it before and I didn't put any sealant on there. Again, mixed reviews about whether or not you should be putting sealant on your valve covers. Um, I don't. A lot of guys say you don't need to. I haven't experienced any massive issues. Uh, they've been holding the oil pretty well. I haven't really had any, too many leaks or anything like that. So I'm going to keep uh, sticking with these. Um, I'll show you the kit that I'm going to put on. I'll put a link to it so you can go and get the same one if you want to. But that's the first one. Let's crack on with the second. It just occurred to me to just uh, sort of like point out something that's really perhaps obvious, but just a word of warning. You're undoing these bolts that are directly, they're not directly above uh, where your spark plug cables go, but they, they, they're above it. Please make sure that this doesn't drop into here. Nothing can drop into here. If anything drops into here, you have a horrible situation on your hands. Um, so uh, perhaps stuff like a bit of paper towel in there if you're not used to doing it, uh, so anything that can stop uh, accidents happening. Cover and gasket number two. So we're gonna move down to the lowers and I will show you how to remove those valve covers. That gets a little bit trickier. <laughs> oh boy, this is tight and awkward. All right, so here we are under the car. Um, we're on the passenger side. Uh, we're gonna be taking off the lower valve covers. I'm gonna get out of the way here so we can see a bit more about what's going on. All right, so we've got 11 of these bad boys now that we're taking out. Um, so, uh, I will see a little bit of a leak here as well, a little bit of a drip just on one bolt. So I might have a little bit of a gasket leak here. I have to see there. Um, but yeah, we're all nice and dry on the top. Um, anyway, we've got 11 of these bolts to come out. Now it's all made a little bit more complicated by a lot of these like oil tubes and all this kind of stuff. Uh, this one shouldn't be too terrible to get out. Um, but over on the driver's side, I cannot remember whether or not we need to remove the crossover um, uh, pipes and all those sorts of things. So I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed, but it never usually works. So uh, yeah, we're gonna remove this, but uh, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna get out of the way because this undoubtedly will just leak, leak a little bit of oil. Make sure you put a little catch pan underneath when the bottom valve cover comes in off. Uh, there's no way you know oil's gonna leak out. Hopefully it's just a very, very tiny few little drops, but uh, yeah, just pop a little pan to catch it and uh, keeps, keeps everything nice and clean. All right. Definitely getting oil coming down onto the onto the heat exchangers. But here we go. This is yeah. This is coming off now. There. So it's really tight, man. But there we go. Okay. And you can see the gasket as well. Actually, has torn just with me taking it out. It was fine being in place. But uh, you can probably see there. It's just get like a little bit of oil. But imagine if you hadn't drained the oil before doing this, so I don't know why anybody would say that you can do this without having drained the oil. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. All right, here we are. So um, this is really tight. I'm gonna struggle to sort of like get into frame and to try and show you all this, but uh, we are underneath the driver's side uh, of the car and we are going to remove the final cover, the driver's side lower valve cover. Um, and to be clear, um, I'm in Canada, so uh, I live in Canada, so um, well, this is a left-hand drive when I'm saying driver's side. Um, so 11 bolts all need to come off, all of which should be relatively easy to get to. I might need an extender on my wrench, um, but uh, the difficulty is this guy. So this, this is, uh, you'll either have a cat bypass pipe, a regular straight bypass, I have an active uh, an awesome active bypass pipe that I installed. I took the cat out, put this in place. Uh, it's made by Raleigh 8, it's freaking awesome. Um, I just wanna talk about this quickly. So basically it's a, it's a bypass that works under a vacuum line. So we have a stock muffler on the car. The stock, this means that when you're at idle and you're, you're at cruise, you have stock volume on the, uh, the engine. And then as soon as you put your foot down, this bad boy opens up and it just becomes a straight pipe. So um, I found that to be the best of both worlds for me and the missus in that we can go for like a five, six hour trek and she's happy sitting in the car. I don't get drone, I don't get too noisy, but if I wanna put the foot down, I get my little bit of fun in there as well. Anyway, uh, the question is, 
can we get this valve cover off without having to remove this bypass pipe? I'm really, really hoping I can, but this area here, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, this area here looks really tight to me. So this could be a bit of a challenge. Um, so I'm gonna crack on with it and let's see where we get to. All right, look at this. <laughs> Uh, I'm screaming joys of success here. Last time I did this, and I remember, because that's when I installed this pipe, with the cat bypass, I had to pull the cat pipe out, <laughs> the cat bypass out um, to get this off. But this came off uh, no issues at all, look at that. So uh, yeah, 11 nuts and bolts all taken out. Uh, the valve covers come off, the gasket came off with it, everything's nice and clean. So uh, I'm just gonna clean up here a little bit, get the gaskets on the table, and then uh, I'm gonna have a little bit of a read. Uh, to figure out what the hell I'm meant to be doing next. All right, so the very first thing that we want to do is we want to turn the engine to top dead center. Um, so you will be using your uh, 24 mil um, for uh, turning turning this. Now, if you don't have this, if you have the factory tool kit, you can use uh, the um, the socket wrench that's included in the tool kit. Uh, I have a 24 mil right here. Um, so we're going to be turning this clockwise, only clockwise. We do ne we never turn counterclockwise. Don't care what anybody else says. I'm going by the book here. Um, so you can argue with one another as much as you like in the comments. Um, the other thing that we need to do is that we need to remove the distributor cap. Now all of the all of the um, spark plug cables, they those are all staying intact. Um, and a little thing I like to do is I take the airbox cover off and I kind of like put the cables up into here. Um, it just sort of keeps them out of the way while you're working. All this kind of stuff. So just dizzy cap comes off here. There's a little clip uh, on this side and then there's one on the far side as well over on uh, sort of more towards the front of the car. They just clip off and then this comes up and we're just gonna pop that there out of the way. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this clockwise, only clockwise, and we can see that the rotor is rotating as well. And we want the rotor to be pointing upwards to around this mark. So we're going to get it sort of coming around there first anyway. And then the, so we're, we're sort of, we're, we're moving in the right direction right now. Uh, the next part we want to do is we want to be checking for the markings that are on the, uh, the fan pulley. So the marking that we need to be looking for is uh, the Z1 or Z1 marking to be in uh, to line up with the marking that's on the fan housing. So I'm going to show you that in a bit more detail. And as I'm, I find as I'm talking through these videos, I feel like I'm getting all the terminology wrong and all that kind of stuff, because I'm sort of focused on what I'm doing. Um, and I don't, don't have the terminology right to to call as automatically as a lot of you guys. But um, anyway, I bring, bring this around and you can start to see that we get some marks coming up here that have been painted in red. Now, I'm gonna to have to probably stop filming just to really double check uh, what these markings are showing and try and focus a little bit more here. Oh, I can see it here on the camera, that's great. So, um, you can see the Z1, which is one before the five degree mark. Okay, and we wanna line that up right there. So that is top dead center. And then we also want to come back and check that the dis the rotor is pointing in the right direction. Okay, I wanna show you this in just a little bit more detail as well. So what we're looking for is that your rotor is pointing, this is the direction that it's pointing in, um, and there's a tiny little mark right here. Sorry, for, that's the cap moving, don't ignore that. There's a tiny little mark right here. So you wanna make sure that as you've rotated your pulley around top dead center, so your Z1 lines up with the fan housing, or the mark on the fan housing, that this is also pointing in the right direction. If it's not, it will be pointing 180 degrees the other way. So all you need to do is continue to rotate uh, the fan clockwise until this is now pointing and then do the line up with Z1 again, which is over here. All right, just to explain this whole top dead center situation. So what we wanna do is we wanna basically line it up so that the intake and exhaust valves are both closed uh, for cylinder one. And why cylinder one? Yes, it comes first, but it's more to do with the firing order and it does not go chronologically. It does not go one, two, three, four, five. You will find on your cars um, a little sticker down here and this will show you the firing order. Now, mine is a little bit faded, but what I can assure you it says is 
one, six, two, four, three, five. Okay, so that's the order that we're going to be moving in. And it shows you the location as well of each of these, uh, of, of, of each of these cylinder heads. So you've got one, two, three on the driver's side in, or for a left-hand drive car, four, five, six on the passenger side. Um, so this is what we're going to be looking for. So what we're going to be doing is we're basically going to be making the adjustments on cylinder one, complete them, triple check them, and then we're going to rotate the engine 120 degrees. That so will then take us to cylinder six, which is the next one on the firing order. And we will make that adjustment, um, which is going to be nice and tight because it's way down, way back there. Um, so let's crack on with that. Okay, of course, this is really tight in here, so like, I'm not too sure how I'm going to be able to show you this, but I'll sort of talk my way through each stage, and if I can film it, then as I'm doing it, I will. The very first part that we need to do for the snap gap, uh, let's zoom in here, um, is... Okay, this is much better. Yeah, so um, the very first thing that we need to do is remove this locking bolt, because that's what the snap gap collar replaces this. Now, this is the adjustment screw. This gives a, this tells us how much travel there is as the rocker as the rocker arm moves up and down or in and out. Um, so this is cylinder one, the intake valve. We're going to remove this, get the snap gap collar on, and uh, after that, we'll then uh, see about placing the shim in and setting it all and locking it down. Okay, hoping you can see this. Um, I this is a thirteen mil that little adjustment nut there, or oh, sorry, the, the locking nut, and be really careful not to drop anything in at this point. This always makes me nervous, but basically this guy comes off, leaving it looking like this. So the very first part of this, um, according to the snap, jack, snap gap instructions, is that we want to take the adjustment screw, which is quite loose, and we want to screw it clockwise, so it's buried against, there's no movement, so that it's, it's, it's right, it's nice and tight, finger tight, you don't need to go anything else. And after that, we want to take the snap gap collar and that screws in. until it's nice and tight on that screw. All right, this is exactly why I'm making these videos. So the first thing that I messed up is that there is a tiny little locking screw that jams in here, that screws in here. Um, and you wanna put that in first before screwing this on. So I'm gonna take this off. We'll put that uh, locking screw back in and then we'll go through this again. So the next part that I wanted to show you is that we've got the uh, locking screw in place. Now, they didn't discuss this. I've been watching the snap gap video and of course the instructions. Um, I don't know that this may really matters, but this can go in, I think, both ways. Um, and this seems to be, the, this little groove seems to be offset. Now this groove is gonna tighten down and lock the um, collar down onto the adjustment screw, which again, I'm just gonna double check that that's nice and tight. So um, I'm doing it so that you can see that the narrower part of that collar is going to be facing upwards like this. So that's how I'm doing it. And that's how it's done in the video. So I'm just gonna follow along to that, um, screw this in, and then we are going to tighten this down with the provided uh, little uh, hex attachment that they give to you. Okay, so the next part, um, I was incorrect. We're not tightening this, uh, th which will of course lock the collar to the um, adjustment screw. We're actually tightening this using the, uh, the, the crow's foot um, that snap gap provide. And this is a little torque tool and it should adjust 10 Newton meters. So we wanna tighten this. That was a nice click. I love that in a tool. That was a really nice click and you really know uh, that you're there. There's no messing around of like, oh, was that it? And then you give it another tweak and it's a little bit tighter. That's bang on, I love that. So the next part of this is that uh, we want to take this little adjustment screw and make, make it so that it's finger tight, uh, which it, I'm turning it clockwise now, uh, that's finger tight. And then you take the provided attachment 
Uh, it's the same tool, uh, just you switch out this little attachment for the two millimeter hex, and we turn this 270 degrees. So that is going to be those three quarters of a turn. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit here. Um, so we're gonna go, that's 180. I feel it getting tight. And that's your three quarters. So according to snap gap, that's all that you need to do. Um, there we go. Okay, so the next part of this is that um, we now need to loosen the collar, um, which is now locked down to the adjustment screw. So we use the same tool. There we go. And we're unscrewing this a little bit, and this is creating a gap now. You can see this move quite a lot. This now creates a gap. That moves a lot, hey? Wow, I never knew that before. Okay, so this creates a gap um, into which we are going to place the uh, shim. So I believe we lock it down. So we're getting very little movement here. Open up just a little bit, and I'm gonna go grab the shim, and then we're gonna place that into position. Um, can you see how this is shaped? This is shaped so that once it's in, it shouldn't just fall off, which is brilliant. Like, they've thought of everything here. So I'm gonna try and slide it in from this, this way. Okay, that completely buckled. I'm gonna try that again. I think I'm gonna put the phone down um, so that I can use both hands and I'm gonna get back to you once it's in place, but I clearly just can't see what I'm doing properly by holding this all together. So that's not a good first attempt. Let's try that again. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so the, uh, doing it holding a phone was a nightmare. Um, all right, so this is in, this went in super easy. It just slid straight on. Um, you can see it, it, doesn't, it doesn't sort of come out easily. Now, uh, we leave this as it is right now. So the shim is there, it's in between the collar and uh, the rocker arm, I think. And again, I'm, if I'm getting these term this terminology wrong, I'm really sorry, but um, you can see exactly where it's going there. So I'm screwing this now down so it's finger tight, and I then use the 10 newton meter wrench, again, to come in and give this a good, there we go. Oh, it's a lovely click. I really like that tool. Okay, this is done. And then the next part is that we just break off this tab. This is designed to break off. So let's give that a wiggle. There we go. And this is it all in place. So basically that shim has created the 0.1 millimeter, 0 0.004 inch gap that we need uh, per the factory manual um, on our intake valve and of course on all valves. Um, so the next part I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the Stomsky tool on there and I'm gonna remeasure it and let's see how accurate this bad boy is. All right, as we're using the Stomsky tool to measure, I may as well show you how this goes on because it's also pretty cool. And you, of course, can do all your adjustments with the Stomsky tool, which I think, you know, it's, it's an awesome, amazing tool for. Um, but given how infrequently I do this, I think if you're someone that's a professional, you probably want to just do it that way. But given, like I say, how infrequently I use this, um, I think this is sort of the best best method, just personally for me. Um, so the Stomsky call, bleh, sorry, the Stomsky tool goes down onto the uh, valve cover bolt, um, and you screw that nice and tight. So this isn't going anywhere. This is a, a, an absolute. Uh, accurate thing. You can see as I'm coming over, you can see that dial shift. Okay, so that's the travel gauge that's just making contact there with the adjustment screw. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to lock that into place. So there's a little locking. I don't think you can see me turning that there. There's a little lock here. It's very hard to do one-handed. Okay, and then I'm going to turn. Let's get rid of this. I'm going to turn this here to be zero one. Now, if this works, if this has all worked properly, then, in theory, as I lift this up, it should be very, very, very precise. Let's get in a bit closer so we can see what's going on. And up. That's amazing, look at that. Ah, now I'm a little off, that's why. Okay, let's get back down there. Okay. It's traveling a little bit, there we go. All right, so I'm at zero, boom, 0 0.004, bang on. Bang on, that's awesome, guys. 
This has just made this very daunting process, and I know I'm only on the first valve, and I don't want to get too excited, but this has made a very daunting process, very relaxing and enjoyable. That's awesome, look at that. Boom, 0.04. I'm just a little bit off on my gauge here. Yeah, I'm a little bit high on the gauge. But it's bang on, look at that, every time. Oh my goodness, this is fantastic. Okay, cool. Right, so I'm going to take this off and uh, I'm going to move down to the number one exhaust valve. Okay, so we're underneath the car again, driver's side, left-hand drive. Um, exhaust valve number one. I've already taken off the factory locking screw. Let's go and look over here. This is number two exhaust valve. Factory locking screw. I've already taken that off. Now, the one thing I wanted to note um, was just that uh, that was a little bit tricky. It, it got stuck, basically. It just got, it just got stuck. It's just the, the threads were a little bit clogged or whatever. Um, so you need to get a screwdriver in there. I got lucky with the length of screwdriver I have. I actually don't have a short screwdriver, but I was warned um, and I didn't listen to get a short little right angled uh, screwdriver or a short screwdriver so that you can do that. I th I'm hoping I'm going to be okay. Like I'm really keeping my fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, so that was the only issue with this one. So I'm going to proceed with putting the snap gap on there and I'm going to use the exact same method as before. Um, I don't really see a need to repeat the video necessarily. So I'm just going to come back in once I'm done and let you know if I, uh, if there were any uh, issues or difficulties with it. Okay, so here's the next issue. Uh, it's not a space issue, it's a distance issue. This, the travel gauge that Stomsky provided me doesn't reach the uh, rocker arm the adjustment screw here for the lower intake valves. So I can't see how it would work on any of the others. Um, now, it may not be, I don't know, not say that it's their fault exactly, it's just that uh, they sell a range of gauges and because I was doing this adjustment engine in, which I'm sure most people would be doing, um, the, I, I opted for the very, very small gauge, which is the one they recommended if you're doing it engine in. I suspect this gauge is actually just for the very tricky, um, sort of like uh, harder to reach uh, valves inside the engine bay. And of course, for these lower ones, they would probably use one of their larger gauges. So I'm gonna ask them about that. Um, but of course, I can't wait the 10 days or whatever it takes to get a new gauge and all that kind of stuff up here. So I'm gonna go on the assumption that what I've done here, because I've used the exact same method as um, we used on the intake valve is just going to be bang on and accurate. It feels great. Um, so I'm going to move on to uh, the next uh, the next cylinder. All right, next in the line of fire, quite literally, is number six, which is way in the back over here. This looks like you know not the most fun one to get to, but that's where we're going next. Um, and again, that's indicated by the firing order that is uh, right down here uh, on your faded label. So uh, you can see, we can see that number six cylinder is right at the back there. So how do we get there? Um, we take our 24 mil and we're gonna turn the engine again. So again, only turning clockwise, but this time we're gonna turn 120 degrees. So what we wanna do is we wanna get in here, let's zoom in. We wanna wait for that next mark to come around, so. Is that it? That must be it right there. There's your 120. Okay, so this should now be cylinder six, close on the intake and on our uh, exhaust. So I'm gonna get this guy done, which is over here. And we're gonna go through the same process again. Okay, so um, number six uh, exhaust was uh, like one minute, like super easy. It's like really accessible down there. Um, it went in fine. Um, so I think it, it feels great. I think it's going to be okay. I'm a little concerned about this number six intake. Um, it's a real, something was funky there. Um, I'm getting a, a good measurement on the Stomsky, uh, but it's not perfect. I'm like point zero, oh, I'm point zero 0.01 of a inch away. Um, so I think the best thing to do is just to keep going through the firing sequence and, um, 
try and get all of the others in a place. I'm just going to go through and check, recheck every single thing. And if that one's not bang on, maybe I'll redo it and see if I can get it a touch closer. Um, so yeah, on to number two now, and that means rotating the engine again another 120 degrees to get us to where we need to be. Oh, okay, uh, number two went really well as well. Um, uh, intake, exhaust, bang on. Uh, so moving over to number four, another 120 degrees over here, number four. And of course, we're back to top dead center now, but at the opposite side. So um, if you take a look at the rotor, then you'll see it's pointing the opposite direction than when we started. So number four being opposite to number one, and this is what we're doing. Uh, we're gonna do the adjustment on this one now. All right, uh, we're done. So um, that was awesome. Um, the, the, that little uh, issue I had with number six, so I went back and checked everything. Uh, so basically I, I, I went through the firing sequence, did the intake valve, did the exhaust valve on each one uh, in order um, per factory, and uh, it all went great. And I had that little difficulty with number six. Um, and the issue with that was that as you take off the factory lock nut on the adjustment screw, those screws haven't been, that bolt, that, that, that nut has not come off that screw for 40 years. It's, it's stayed where it is. It's been adjusted, it's nice and loose at the bottom, but as it comes up through the threads, gunk and grime and all that kind of stuff, it kind of gets caught. So what was happening is it was seeming, like getting the factory nut off was totally fine, but then getting the collar from the snap gap kit on, it was kind of biting as it went through onto that adjustment nut, uh, adjustment screw. And um, I think it was sort of maybe perhaps over tightening the screw as I was screwing it on. And then when I did the, then, I, then when I torqued it um, into position before tightening the locking, the little knock screw on here, um, I think maybe it's just offsetting things a tiny bit. So I had to do that three times um, and I, I got through it, but this is the great thing. They give you a whole bunch of shims in here. So it's, it's not an issue if you, if you sort of mess things up the first time that you're doing it, which is great. They've really thought about this. This is such a good kit. I, I'm, I'm really blown away by it. Um, so I, I, now when I was going through the other, um, cylinders, I had, uh, I had the same issue. I came across the same issue on some of the other valves, sorry. Um, and I think it was just sort of the knack of it. What I ended up doing actually um, is I, I took a small flathead Phillips, uh, sorry, not Phillips, a small flathead screw and I put it, I used it with the very small handled torque wrench. And then I had like an adjustable wrench um, 30 mil adjustable wrench just to get that. So this, this essentially was holding the adjustment screw in place as I was working the factory screw off. And what I would do is I would sort of work it off and then work it back on again and work it off and work it back on again, never unthreading it completely, just kind of like cleaning out those, uh, those screw threads a little bit so that when I then did come to put the collar on, it just went on a little bit more smoothly. So what I found is as long as this guy, this snap gap collar spins freely, as long as you just, it, it springs nice and loosely on there, you're gonna get a bang on precise reading every single time you do this. And the reason is, is because it's just so well designed. This, this works with this physical, it's a physical shim that you tighten against. You can't go past it, it's not gonna squeeze down. You can't go, you can't make it thinner, you can't make it, you can't bunch it up to make it thicker. It, it's, it's, it is what it is. It slides in, you screw it down, and it's accurate every single time. So if you remember that number six valve, intake valve, I was having some concerns with whether or not it was uh, tight enough. Uh, sorry, whether or not I was getting the right um, travel distance on there. Um, when I came, when I finished off uh, doing all of the valve adjustments, I then went back through um, and rotated the engine another 360 degrees and went through every single uh, 
valve intake and exhaust, and uh, we're bang on, so, parenthesis, sorry, not the exhaust valves, I'm gonna to come to that in a second, but we're bang on. Um, we are 0.004, I'm getting that reading every single time I took it using, it's kind of over here, using the Stomsky tool. Now the cool thing about this as well is that I was able to um, give the Stomsky tool a good going over too, because this is a tool that they sell uh, for doing a valve adjustment. Uh, so you could just buy the Stomsky tool and not have to worry about the snap gap at all. Um, and I think that they're both really fantastic pieces of kit. And here's my two cents on it. What I found was that the Stomsky tool, if you aren't 100% buttoned down, like if you, like if, if this attachment, when you screw it into the, um, into the, the, va the, the valve cover bolts and attach it, uh, which holds this, fastens this to, uh, to the engine block, um, your, if you're off ever so slightly, you kind of get like these little misreadings. And we've got three adjustment screws here. If these aren't completely, completely tight, you get a little miss. If this isn't bang on, if the, if the measurement gauge isn't bang on where you need it to be, you're going to get a little bit of a misreading. So that misreading I was getting on number six, when I bent back round to reread them, I then got a misreading on number one, panicked, took this off, put it back on again, and then it was bang on. And I think it was just the way this was sitting. Now the other thing that I've noticed, and this is nothing to do with Stomsky at all, Stomsky, at all. Stomsky resell SPI gauges. And because I wanted to do my adjustment engine in, I wasn't gonna drop the engine just to do that, and you shouldn't have to, um, I opted for their very, very small gauge. This is the one that they recommend. Now, two issues. Uh, wish they'd been clearer and said, I wouldn't know, because I've only done this the second time, that this travel gauge doesn't reach, it's not long enough to, do, to measure the exhaust valves. Um, so that means none of my exhaust valves can be measured. Am I concerned about it? My OCD is kicking in, but um, I, based on the readings that we're getting on the, on the intake valves up top, and how the snap gap works with these shims, I'm not concerned about it. I think it's bang on. I've been through and they, you know, you, you get that, you're starting to get the feel for it now. They all feel really, really bang on. I'm not gonna pretend I know. I'd love to be able to measure it, but I can't. So um, I'm in a place where I'm, I'm more than comfortable to button her back up, get those valve covers back on, get the oil back in and really enjoy driving her. And hopefully she's a little bit quieter than she was before. Um, certainly with that, but those, that, that valve slap that I was getting. Um, the other issue is this, which is that my, my little gauge here, this guy has actually broken. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but basically down here, the um, small little hand on the small dial has flown off and uh, no longer uh, works. So it's, it's kicking the main dial. So I'm gonna give Stomsky a shout. Um, I'm hoping that they will replace it for me. I don't know where, it's certainly not their situation. It's a manufacturer defect. Um, so I don't know whether I need to speak to SPI or not, but um, I'll get in touch with Stomsky. And at the same time, I think what I might do is uh, if they send me a replacement for this, is, uh, is also ask them which gauge they would recommend for the, for the lowers. So the next time I come to do this, um, I've got it all there because I really would like to measure it. Um, between the two sets, what would I recommend? Uh, this depends entirely on you. I, I'm pumped. I'm so blown away by the snap gap. It's awesome. It's really, it's such a brilliant, it's such a brilliant piece of kit. It's really well made. It's, it's like, like the 10 Newton meter wrench is such a, it's a wonderful click. It's like you get a, a, a really definite click and a bit of, tra like it doesn't travel. Like I find on a lot of my torque wrenches, you know, I get that little, it's like a little thing. And then, you know, I'm, I'm more used to it now, but at the beginning I was like, was that it? Was that right? And then I was tightening it a little bit more. And of course it's edging in, but it's catching again. And it's just, th this is really well made. Um, everything about the set's really well thought out. They've included um, an extra collar. Uh, 
I didn't need it, but who knows? Maybe one rolls under a box or what, or off to the side of the garage to drop something. You know, I like you'd be in a real pickle, and you've got a spare one here. You've got a bunch of new. Uh, uh, these are the little locking screws uh, that you use. Uh, so you've got a load of these. I'm guessing every time you redo it, you should use a new one of these. I have checked the instructions, but I'm assuming that's why you have so many. And I've got a whole bunch of uh, shims as well. I'm guessing I can probably do two more valve adjustments before I need to order more. Um, the tool's all here. This is one hour of labor. This, this kit is one hour of labor in a shop um, for you to do something that is now is now foolproof. Um, I don't want to take away from mechanics. I love my mechanics. The guys I work with, they're amazing. There's a lot of things that I would go to, but I also love wrenching on my own car. Like I really love learning more and more about these engines. And this is such a great way to do it. It's eliminated a bunch of my OCD worry and concern. Um, it's really easy to use. Once you get the first valve done, you kind of like, it, it's just a, a really st simple sort of like three or four step process and you just fly through it. It's, it's fantastic. Um, should you get the Stomsky to measure things at the end? That's up to you, uh, of course. <laughs> um, but my OCD uh, really, really, like I'm gonna sleep completely peacefully at night. There's no question in my mind as to whether or not these valves on the top are bang on. I love to measure the bottoms, but I've got so much confidence seeing what I've seen on the intake valves that I'm absolutely sure that the exhaust valves are perfect. So all that's left for me to do now is to button her back up, fill her with oil, um, turn her on and see how she sounds and throw this little sucker away because I am never, ever, ever using this ever again. Thanks, Snapgap.